So there's a principle within the golf swing, right? We, we're going to talk about this specifically to the player that we've got here. Yeah. Um, it's about keeping the arms relatively in front of the body. Absolutely. Right. And golf is an athletic rotary game. Yeah. Right. We're not there standing at the golf ball, tight, tense, and pulling those arms around our body to create what we think is a golf swing motion. And we see with the best players in the world, there is far more rotation. A lot of players would benefit from getting more rotation and keeping their arms relative relatively to their turn. in front of that turn. Yeah. Okay. Rather than standing there and pulling the arms around the body. Absolutely. And that can happen in the takeaway, in the backswing. And for a lot of players as well, it can be conceptual. And a lot of it can actually occur in the downswing, which is one of the other videos that we did here today. Yeah. Um, and this play is similar, but we're going to talk about uh, on the left-hand side, which was the before and on the right and the after. Yeah. And you said that uh, when we're discussing this player before and managing his expertise, expectations he wants to turn pro uh he's a young guy he's um he's working hard at his golf game he said he's playing off about five yeah about four or five yeah four or five handicap at the moment so let's talk about the differences on the left and the right here yeah so on the left here uh again lots of setup stuff that we tried to do very bunched up his arms didn't really hang from him he was very much in here with set up you know mm -hmm. instead of getting his arms a little bit further away from him to give him a little bit more space in this area here changed a bit of that changed a lot of setup i always start with setup my students now what you've seen from that position is you've seen him get very very vertical mm -hmm. the club worked very very much out and up but but extreme to the extreme sense that when he got to the top of his backswing the club was almost pointing to the sky and dead vertical yeah 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 we don't really for for a player of his level um he could get to that sort of four or five handicap be excellent yeah. around the greens but there's certain limitations certain positions that yeah. we see with players really struggle to get over that hump. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of players would benefit from the knowledge and understanding of what got them to where they are isn't necessarily going to get them to the next level that they want to achieve. Exactly. Okay, and that's that's the whole point of understanding where a player's at in their career. Like we were speaking about with Pranav just now. Hmm. He doesn't need to do a hell of a lot to match him up and get him going more in the right direction. Yeah. You get a guy that really wants to achieve big things at the higher level, Okay, there's some wholesale changes we might have to make here. Yeah. You know, we might have to do a little bit here to just get you going. And the big thing that that influenced, as you see from this position on a down the line perspective, his arm plane was way above his shoulder plane. Yeah. Okay. So if we have a look at uh, what Clappy's just talking about there, that lead arm relative to his shoulder plane, as an example, the hands have lifted quite high. Correct. Yeah. And that's restricted how much he turned. Mm. Right. So because then he wasn't turning and everything was going very upright here, mm. there's only one way this club's going to want to go because he's a decent player. Right. A lot of players from this position would just chop down on it and hit big slices, very which is why you see yeah. 20, 20 handicappers, things doing that. But what he does as a decent player that plays at a relatively good level is he drops it back on the inside here. Mm. And we, we can quite clearly see that from that change of direction. Yeah. The golf club then tends to kind of work quite far underneath him underneath the plane yet yeah, way from the inside yeah. and so then the action that he has to do through the ball is going to be very very handsy again very m much of a motion where you need to do something to square the face a lot of manipulation yeah 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 okay so talk to me about then the changes that were made and then what you so there was a few about. drills we've done here this is an example of a drill that i like to do with some of my players that get dumped and inside you get a alignment stick and we'll demonstrate that in a minute you put it through the belt loops predominantly sticking at the trail side mm -hmm. and we're trying to basically keep his trail elbow in front of him because this one on the right we had already matched up his arm plane when yep. we got to the top of backswing so if you whiz this to the top here on the right you'd see that the arm plane massively matches where the shoulder plane's at right yeah, now it's a huge difference okay. between what we we saw over there on the left hand side right so we match that up and then from there he would still have the tendency to drop that club back on the inside mm. now for me, the feeling for him, and it was more so what was going on with his trail arm. Mm. So when we got to the top of his backswing, his downswing would move and the trail arm would jump behind the seam line in your top. Yeah, okay. and that's, that's I, a purely a reaction from where he was at the top. Correct. He had to try and do that, otherwise he would just lightning rod it straight down. Exactly that. And I like to use the seam line as a really good reference point mm -hmm. relative to your turn to your kind of arm swing during the backswing so that we can keep everything more in front of you. Right? So when you say seam line, just so the guys at home can get into when it's set up to that golf ball for me. Yeah. Is that two hands on and swing to the top. So seam line, Clappy's talking about this side of the shirt there. So we see that far too many players in transition or in the backswing would get it well behind the seam line of the shirt. Yeah. Okay. So especially when now that the lead arm is level with the, the ground and the downswing, if you get yep. to that position for me, 
So you've gone through transition. The further that we see this trail arm retracted or pulled behind, you can see the effect that this golf club would move a lot more on the inside relative to that golf ball. And really from there, for a good player, it requires a lot of hands lot and of such to get the job done. A lot of throwing with the right arm to get the club back out in front, basically. Yeah, right? so, so after you got his, uh, his arm plane matched up with his shoulder plane, and then from there we can see a bit of a, uh, an alignment stick through his belt buckles there. Let's, uh, let's get that alignment stick out. Let's talk yeah. about that. So what we've done with this is um, predominantly when you put this through your belt loops, um, a lot of people like to have it the same amount stuck at a lead side as they stick at a trail side. Mm -hmm. Instead of having it kind of equal like this, I predominantly pushed it at a trail side there, mm -hmm. right? Because what we've done from there is we were able to, during downswing, help him understand the feeling for when he got to the top, what he had to feel like to get that club out in front. If he moved, has he moved before his elbow jumps behind, mm. And that club kind of bounces, it's yeah, going to okay. hit that stick. Yeah, so a great feedback tool. Really good feedback tool and an external cue that he needed. Some people don't need external cues, some people need feels. He needed that external cue to really dive into why something was happening, mm. right? One other drill we jumped into just to help him get some motion and get some feeling for what was going on is we got his lead arm and we put it behind his trail tricep, right? We applied a lot of pressure on the back of that trail tricep and we just felt like from here, he was pushing he was keeping, that yeah. arm to get it back out in front. And we, we still kept the stick in there while we were doing this drill as well. But the main feel to this was that from here, he was able to deliver the club in a much better motion, but more so he was able to keep this trail arm in front of his torso. And I, I think one thing that we will make mention here is the reason this, this is not an overshare of information to this player. No. What you've done is you've created a feedback loop here with um, this alignment stick that if he does this move with his trail arm and it gets yeah. behind him, he's going to feel that. Now, a lot of players would then look at that and go, well, I'm using an alignment stick and then he's thinking about that, it's too much. No, no, no. That there alignment stick is just a reference point, the same as videoing. Correct. Or using a mirror. And it was just a great way for this player when he's at the range to get some idea of where that was. And when he would actually get out of position, okay, it would hit the stick. His one drill that he was focusing on was what you were just saying there. And if you set up to the ball and put your hand behind your tricep there, this is the feedback for what this is achieving. He's not thinking about this and this as he's swinging back for me, great. He's focusing on this trail arm and keep going to the top and then keep coming down. A little bit of application of pressure here with the back of his hand pushing his arm and you can see how much width he's got here okay so there's a lot of room and a lot of distance for then clappy from that position to hit some really quality golf shots for this player if you do that same thing for me if he was to do this drill and this would slip behind we can see all of a sudden he's going to chop my neck off and it's going to hit that alignment stick there so there's a big difference between those two motions this drill that really doesn't cost him anything, right? Just using his own hand, but Correct. built a great awareness and feel of how the trail arm should move to the top of the golf swing and getting that reference of, okay, if it doesn't work like that, how, do, how does this player who's not a coach know, right? Yeah. You gave him this alignment stick, which just worked fantastically well for this player with a bit of trial and error. One thing that's really key with a player that I like to use as well, when you're going through swing changes and you're doing some stuff with a player is that I like to make sure that they're not hitting a thousand drill shots mm -hmm. and then they're going into hitting yeah. two full swings, right? Correct. I like to structure practice so that they've got three or four balls. The first ball is dedicated solely to drill, freeze, 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 chip mm -hmm. it out there, get some motion, get learning how you should move. The second one, you increase the speed a bit by taking away an external cue. Mm -hmm. The third one, you might take away your lead arm yeah. and then you hit a full one with the fourth shot. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you just keep going through that with the motion, as you then move through the shot, you're then letting the pieces seep in piece by piece. They bleed in gradually. That's great. You're not trying to jump from one extreme to another. Mm. If you improve 1% each time you're trying to do it, you're going to see some massive gains by the time you get to the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so just, you know, I'd set up three balls like this. First ball, I'd go, okay, apply the pressure on the back of your lead arm. You mm -hmm. go to the top, you'd come down, mm -hmm. you'd hit the shot, you chip it out there. Okay. The next one I'd go, okay, take away your arm behind here. And we'll just do one where you go up to the top we'll start down and you'll freeze and you'll chip it out then okay the third ball you take away the freeze go up to the top swing down at a slower pace and then the fourth ball you hit a full shot yeah so, so you're you're doing a series of drills now would it ever then regress so for example let's say he does the third aspect of that 
complex there, yeah. right? And he hits the stick. Yeah. Would you then guide him to go back to the first one and then build slowly up? Absolutely from there? not. I, yeah. I'd, okay. I'd make sure that we went through the progression of the four balls every time. Every time. Okay. Because the only thing then I would use is that cue to go, okay, you need to exaggerate this a hell of a lot more mm. when you get onto this fourth ball. Mm. And it also takes away the emphasis for a player to go, oh, I flushed that one. I'm going to go and flush another one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Having a bit of discipline yeah. to just go okay need to go back to the drill now let's go back to it and do it again exactly because again the transference from here to the course is a whole different kettle of fish completely different story yeah. we're only just transferring from a drill to a full swing on the range mm. okay so the fact that in the third ball you might not have done it very well mm. but then building your own awareness for okay that happened then mm. so when you're practicing by yourself you can at least turn around and go okay i need to exaggerate that more on ball one but I'm not going to go straight back to ball one. Yeah. I'm going to hit ball four. Yeah. Exaggerating my feels again. Yeah. Then I'm going to get right back and to And just it cycle one. through the different, different elements of the drill. Yeah, okay, yeah. great. So I'll try this one out here and I'll place this, you said, only through the first couple of belt loops there. Yeah, so I've got a, quite a bit of excess. Yeah, you could go a little tiny bit more elite. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Now from this position here, the feel getting the back of the lead hand up against my right tricep here, feeling like as I'm pivoting to the top, it's all staying relatively in front. The guys will be able to see that this is, by the time that I would get back into this stage, we've got a lot of room here, right? Yeah, absolutely. We're not back behind at all where you would see that shaft come in. So we're starting off, we're just getting a feel very slowly. Okay, so that would be the first one there. I like that, I feel like I've established that. Yeah, really good. So then moving on to some slow swings. Good. Yeah, like that. You can see the gap now through in your trail arm and your body through the ball. Feels like I have so much room. And again, this is early extension again that you're going to hear. And mm. so much with golf. He had to early extend to hit good shots. Yeah. But he was bunching himself up in here so much mm. that he couldn't get back to the ball. So now we're creating a lot more space here yeah. between his kind of hip and his lead arm so that he can create some rotational freedom through the ball. Exactly. So instead of just staying in posture for the sake of staying in posture, the reason he was early extending and getting out of his posture was due to a sequencing issue of how his arms were working relative to his chest. And this one here, just doing these little movements, we'll see if I can put this one together for us. I'm gonna do one more dry drill, get the feeling of it. That looks great. And I'm gonna work real slowly, just pitch one down there. That was good there. That was Felt the like, draw suit. yeah. Felt like I had so much room through the golf mm. ball there. Mate, excellent drill for anyone who feels like in the transition, those arms are getting well behind them. Having an understanding of the hands need to stay relatively in front. One of my all time favorite drills that I give to so many players of getting a sensation of what it's like to achieve a position which can produce really functional results like that. Love it. Good job. Nice.